Ashley Edwards. I'm a livestock specialist for the LSU Ag Center. We're here today on not quite the prettiest day to do this video, but we're waiting on some rain to come in and we're not going to complain about that. So um, we're here for our virtual field day and I want to talk a little bit about bull management during the off season. It's August and so during this time I bet a lot of you all probably have your bulls in the bull pasture and they're resting. Now one thing that I think a lot of our guys are guilty of is not quite checking on their bulls nearly as much as we check on our cows during the off season. Surely our cows get checked on hopefully daily largely because they're busy year round, right? They're either calving, have a calf by their side, or getting ready to calve. Something's going on with them. So we check on them frequently. When our bulls aren't in the breeding season, we don't need them quite as much. However, let's think about the economic impact they have and whether or not this whole checking on them at the last minute thing is the best management strategy for us. We know the obvious, that they contribute 50% of the genetic potential to each calf. Now let's look at a three generation span within our herd. Over three generations, a bull has had an impact of 87.5% in terms of genetics for that herd. So again, he has impacted 87.5% of the genetics in a herd over a three generation span. So what happens if he has an off year? Let's say you only get 60 to 70% calf crop, or let's say it's even worse than that. How does that affect your profits and your pocketbook as a whole? The point is turning our guys out and just forgetting about them until the last minute, maybe until we need that breeding soundness exam, or we just need to turn them out for the cows is not always the best strategy. Let's start by talking about nutrition. Our young bulls, like the ones behind me, may have just gone through their first breeding season. They're still growing, so we need them to gain about a pound and a half to two pounds per day during the off season. The need to supplement them with grain or other forages will depend on what your forage quality and quantity looks like in your pasture throughout the year. Our mature bulls may be on more of a maintenance type ration. They can typically get by on pasture. However, if you do need to supplement with hay, you wanna make sure you have eight to 10% crude protein and feed about 2% of their body weight. It's not uncommon for our bulls to lose a body condition score or two during the breeding season. With that, a bull may come out a little bit closer to a body condition score of four. The chart you're seeing here illustrates the nutritional needs of a bull in a body condition score of four if we want him to be back up to an acceptable condition of five or six at the start of the breeding season. Of course, you will need to first assess body condition, understand the weight of your bull, and know how many days you have to get him to the next breeding season to know exactly how much to supplement him and how hard to push him. When possible, we do try to avoid feeding diets high in grain. One, from an economic standpoint, especially this year, it hurts our pocketbooks. But two, in addition, research has shown that high grain or high energy diets decreases libido and impairs sperm quality, leading to an overall decrease in fertility. Even though it's August when this is coming out, we wanna go ahead and plan ahead for winter. Especially this year when we're faced with a drought, we know that hay shortages might be a little bit lower and that when it comes down to it, our pasture forage and quality and quantity might be impaired. So go ahead, think forward, not only on what your cows are gonna need, but what these bulls will require as well. Make sure you always provide a complete mineral supplement and salt. And then also when we start thinking about these nutritional requirements, we wanna think about housing as well. So I mentioned earlier that the bulls that are standing behind me are ones that are a little bit younger. We have those separated from our mature bulls because their nutritional requirements are different. But when we also start thinking about housing and pasture space, we wanna think about social dominance. So these were together, they came from the same breeder, we used them for the first year, we knew we could put them back together, manage them from a nutritional standpoint, and then also not worry too much about them fighting. Your mature bulls and your younger bulls typically are gonna have some kind of little tiff. You might also see some sort of social dominance or clashing within the mature bulls as well. This is where you can come in and utilize maybe temporary fencing, electric fencing, something like that to help keep them separate. So again, not only does it help with the personality differences that you might see in your bulls, but it also helps you manage them a little bit more efficiently in terms of nutrition and just overall management. So we also need to think too about shade, uh, where it's needed, you probably can't see it, but behind me there are shade trees at the back of this pasture that will provide that um, during the hotter months. You also need to make sure that you're gonna have some sort of dry area in case it does rain quite a bit or get pretty wet and gross during the winter. Make sure that the bulls have plenty of room to be able to move around and get a little bit of exercise as well. 
Then you also want to consult your veterinarian in terms of overall herd health. Make sure you have them on a proper vaccination protocol, parasite control, um, and just overall uh, soundness exams prior to the breeding season. Please remember that those breeding soundness exams need to be completed at least 60 days before a breeding season in case something is wrong that allows the bull enough time for spermatogenesis to occur to be able to get him back in shape before you turn him out with the cows. The other thing you want to start considering right now is how many bulls you're going to need for the upcoming year. So when we think about bull ratios, we typically say that he can handle the number of cows equivalent to his age in months. Um, so a mature bull can handle 25 to 30 cows typically. Um, and then our younger bulls might be a little bit less, 20 to 25 or so um, coming into there. Be thinking about that. Think forward. Um, think about your fall sales that, that are going to be coming up. Don't wait until the last minute because at the last minute you're going to be seeing all the coals that are left over from those sales. Start looking forward to those. Start talking to your breeders. Get those on your calendar and go ahead and start considering those. As we wrap up, realize that managing bulls during the off season is just as important as it is the month or two leading up to the breeding season. Check them daily. Don't just put them in the back 40 and forget about them. Make sure that, that they are gaining appropriately, but realize that typically you have time, so you can do a slow gain to get them back into that body condition score of five or six before the breeding season starts. If you have any questions for this, please reach out to me or reach out to your local extension agent and we'll be happy to help you.